Was I the only one that was watching this throwback SmackDown this week and getting more like throwback early mid nineties raw vibes? Like really? Like the the digital fist was weird. Uh, I don't know how much of a throwback show this was. I mean, as a general rule, like I I appreciate the nod to the past, and I understand wanting to show you know some of the great things that have happened over the years. But there's also that piece sometimes that this can backfire a lot because it reminds fans of how cool things used to be and aren't any more. And then furthermore, when you're calling it a throwback edition of SmackDown, you would expect to see more big name stars of the past from SmackDown than you actually got. Like, primarily was Teddy Long, Playa, and that's about it. Kind of a weird choice this week. Like, really, really weird. Am I the only one that thinks that way? I, I can't be. But you know what? The past is the past, and the now and the future are the now and the future. And what better way to kick off the show this week, as we should, of course, with our tribal chief, basking in the glory of the magnificence of what he did, ridding SmackDown in the WWE once and for all of that mm, ever-present Fucking gnome troll Daniel Bryan. It's time. He needed to move on. He forced himself in the way of WrestleMania main event where he didn't belong. And now he's off SmackDown. I don't give a shit what happens with him next. He's out of the way. That's what matters the most. And, and lo and behold, you know, leave it to Roman to always be looking at the future and be looking ahead and at the same time looking to take care of those that mean the most to him. Graciously bringing back Another member of the family, Jimmy Uso, into the fold. And last time we saw this, he was getting choked out of the pay-per-view a few months back. You know, like this was supposed to be a big, you know, resplendent majesty moment. Here's Jimmy to join his twin brother, Jay, and they're falling in line behind the head of the table, and we're going to have some dominant Samoan SWAT team faction. And of course, leave it to Cesaro to not mind his own damn business and have to stick his freaking weirdly veined head into business where it doesn't belong. Wasn't even mad that Seth Rollins, the rating slayer, attacked him. Because he deserved it. You don't interrupt tribal chief, head of the table, family business, Cesaro. And this is where we get Teddy Long coming out, joins the party, and he says the match between Seth Rollins and Cesaro that's about to come up has some stakes, and that if Cesaro wins, he gets his shot at Roman Reigns and the Universal Championship at WrestleMania Backlash, which is still such a stupid name. Just call it Backlash! So anyways, Cesaro beats Seth Rollins, and, you know, you could see this coming. I'm going to say this, though, a couple of things. Number one, after the match. Seth's lucky that him and Roman have all that history, because he needs to watch himself when he's talking to the head of the table like that. Number two, and more importantly, why in the hell are the Usos so fucking hard-headed? The hell does Jimmy get off talking to Roman like that? Well, because you're pissed a few months back that Roman put you in the fucking guillotine and was choking your ass out? Well, you know what? That's what the hell you get for sticking your nose into business where it didn't belong. Jay put himself in that spot. It was up to Jay and Jay alone exclusively to deal with the consequences, repercussions, and ramifications of that. But no, you just had to sit there and busybody your ass into that spot, tiptoeing through the tulips. Roman helps you smell the roses. Sitting there talking about he ain't going to be Roman's bitch. You'll be his bitch if he wants you to and like it, as you should. You need to get headlines, Jimmy, for something other than DUIs, okay? Just saying. I mean, it's so bad that you even got Jay trying to talk some damn sense into Jimmy. Jay, main event of hard-headedness Uso, trying to talk sense into Jimmy, and this motherfucker still don't want to listen. Hell's wrong with you? I know the Samoans got hard heads, but you have to be hard-headed? Damn. What else happened on this week's show? Ruby Riot and Carmella. I swear at one point... Liv Morgan gave Ruby Riot one too many good games, and Ruby kind of looked back at her and glanced at her. That's the only thing I really remember from this match, other than Carmella wins, LOL, who cares? You got Bailey's tribute to the past women's champions, which, you know, I was looking the whole time at Bailey and wondering what the fuck was going on with her hair. Like, seriously. 
the hell was that this week? I, I couldn't tell, like, if she didn't put on some spritz or something to bring it down. Like, was that done by design? Was that what you wanted to do? Because that looked god-awful. Of course, Bianca Belair didn't look god-awful. She looked majestic, as always, until Bailey beat her ass down. And I find it really interesting. Yeah, I'm keeping track here. Since WrestleMania, have we not seen Sasha Banks on SmackDown one single time? Am I wrong? It's weird how we went from Bianca to all of a sudden it's to Bailey. Interesting to me, nonetheless. Um... It looked like we were going to get Rey Mysterio in a match, easy for me to say. But then, somebody had to sit there and challenge and talk shit to Dominic. So Dominic stepped up to the plate so that way he could beat the ass out. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Now how sad and pathetic do you have to be if you're Dolph Ziggler? <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. He's so pathetic, he's losing to Dominic Mysterio. One thing to lose to Daddy Ray, you're losing to the green as Gil's son, Dominic. It's because you absolutely suck and you serve no purpose. And all these people, all these years, they get featured, endeavored, and released. How the hell has Dolph Ziggler never gotten released? Because once again, most importantly of all, <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler. I, I have a question. I'm going to move on to something else here. Reginald, before his match with Tamina, said last week... That that she left a bad taste in his mouth. D dude, did you like go down on her front side after a workout? Did you go down on her backside after she got out of the bathroom? All right, that doesn't sound like a her problem. That kind of sounds like a you problem, you nasty, nasty fucker. So Tamina and Reginald had another one of these stupid intergender matches that I wish they would leave on the fucking independent scene because they're stupid. It's all like, you got to do shit, but you can't let Reginald actually get into any physical contact. But the woman, of course, can hit the dude all they want. That's so fucking dumb and hypocritical. These are so stupid. They don't have any place here. Like, if you're going to have the men and ladies wrestle, then they need to actually, like, have real on matches. And if you can't do that, then stop doing this shit. And this is just, to me, like, you're continuing this whole thing with Tamina and Natalia and Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. And it's, to me, it's a thing of... Why didn't you just have Tamina get a WrestleMania moment? It seemed like that's what you were positioned to do. So what the fuck is the whole point of this at this point? You haven't won at the Backlash show. Like, that's just counterproductive. Uh, you know, and we're talking about this being a throwback SmackDown. Anybody else get vibes from that 10-man tag, especially the promos beforehand, that that felt a lot more like a five-on-five -five traditional Survivor Series tag match than it did some type of SmackDown match? I know Teddy Long used to love his tag team matches play, but good lord. Apollo Crews' team wins, but it's Corbin getting the victory over Nakamura. And, you know, what are we really going to remember about this? Nothing. And then we get to the main event segment, which, you know, that's why the show was good this week. Because it had Roman beginning, Roman middle, Roman end, Roman throughout. And that's what we need. That's what we look for. But, again, I keep coming back to the fact, like, why do the Yosos persist in being so damn hard-headed? It took Jay months to fall in line and realize his place as the right-hand man. Now, here's Jimmy. Perfect opportunity to come in, ride the momentum, and be the left-hand man. But no, he wants to sit there and selfishly talk about the tag titles and all these things that you can still do when you're falling in line. Like... Why wouldn't you want to associate with the success of the top guy in the fucking company? All these personal feelings about what happened in the past. Who gives a shit? Learn from the past and move the hell on. The reality is, is Roman is the now and the future. Get on board with that. But instead of falling in line, as it was earlier in the night, when he cost the rating slayer a match with his distractions, here comes Jimmy. Instead of creating peace, brotherly love, and harmony... And family unity, he creates drama and distractions, which leads to creating an opportunity for Cesaro to come in with his blindside attacks, these vicious, savage, racist attacks that have no place in a SmackDown ring. And it's all Jimmy's fault. It's all Jimmy's fault. Blame Jimmy. SmackDown was better this week because it featured a lot more Roman. That's always a good place to start. 
But some of these characters be so frustrating, like, no, you just fall in line with the tribal chief, the head of the table. It's not the hard of a thing to do. And instead now, because no thanks to Jimmy Uso, screwing it up, just like main event Jay, now Roman's got to defend his belt at WrestleMania Backlash, and it is critically, criminally unfair. You guys can let me know what you thought of SmackDown this week. This week was all about Jimmy Uso and his screw-ups. So damn hard-headed, it's ridiculous.